Morning everybody. So there are no kookaburras today but just a whole lot of crows. And today I think for some light relief I'm going to talk to you about bulls and not great bulls of fire or any other bull that you perhaps were thinking of. I am talking about fabric twine, balls of fabric twine. Now I had a grandmother who I admired greatly and um, she was a great instigator or in I think she inspired me to to create the way I do she was a woman whose hands were never still she was either crocheting tatting darning having a little ciggy or two or playing patience and no matter what I said to her if I said oh grand who are you crocheting that rug for she would go no reason and she had two sayings one I prefer over the other one the one was idle hands are the devil's work, which I wasn't all that keen on. And the other one was busy hands, quiet mind. My hands are, remind me so much of my grandmother because they are never very, they never still. And I'm always doing something. And especially at night when I'm mindlessly watching TV, I do stuff. I do either English paper piecing, which I have been doing for 40 years and it is my yoga or else I make fabric twine. This I love because we can take this and turn into these beautiful balls of greatness. And I do use them. Once they are made up into something, I, I stitch them together and I make gorgeous placemats. My tray cloth is made from them. I make these kind of little bowls and then give them a lid to keep you know stuff in and I also use them in part of my bag so for example this little pattern that I made years ago oh I digress can I tell you the story so when I travel to Sydney or Canberra I'm a very very nervous flyer I'm terribly nervous in fact I have to take medication and but one of the things that I do obviously is I sew because I've got one and a half hours and many hours at the airport waiting but I needed something to carry my you know sewing stuff in that was small and compact and also could fit on the you know the fold out table that was small enough and big enough to fit on the table but also left enough space there for my glass of wine that was very important to me so I came up with this little idea that I saw that in there, there's a bag, there's a little pocket there to keep my paper, oh there, sorry, wrong one, papers, etc. And on the other side to keep my ring cutter and my thimble and my needle with my thread, which I just thread through my fabric and then all I have to do is pull it through there so my roll of thread isn't sort of rolling down the aisle. But anyway, I, I digress. I made this for myself and everybody wanted one and I put it on my Instagram. Anyway, I made a pattern for it and it this pattern just did so well. I couldn't actually believe how how many patterns it sold. But anyway, on the on this pattern I needed fabric uh covered cord, which you can you can buy. Absolutely you can buy. But as I said, start you know, use what you are have what you are, use what you have and start where you are or whatever that is. And when I did this little slow stitching purse, I needed fabric cord to go around the top, obviously, and for my little handles. And so I just used, I made fabric cord from the same color. This is contrasting color, and this is the same color. And it worked really, really well for my little bag. What I'm gonna do is, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to, as I said, I find this so relaxing to do. It's, yeah. I find it easier to cut my fabrics at one inch um, width. I mean, you can do anything. The thicker your fabric, the thicker your cord. And I always try and make sure that my f fabrics contrast really, really well. So my, my little balls are, you know, colorful like that. So begin with a nice tight knot. Another thing that I find very, very useful is I use water. 
I use a little tub of water and I wet my hands and I wet the fabric. Now why I do this is because the water gives me purchase so that I can twist quite firmly and tightly and also it doesn't um, unravel as quickly and also it's softer on my hands because I'm not having to manipulate it all that much. So to begin with you're going to wet your hands quite well. I'm just going to do this quite quickly and then I'm, I'm going to explain to you what happens. I'm just going to move this water out the way in case there's a little bit of an accident. There's quite a few things happening as I'm twisting and I'm going to tell you now what happens. The top one, which is my orange one, I'm going to twist it away from myself and my, this index finger is going to come in and push up so that the, it tightens the twist and then I'm going to wrap the orange one towards myself. Hold it. Blue twist away, index finger comes in, tightens and pulled towards me. Just make sure that you've got some water. So orange is away, index finger there pushes up and then I bring it towards myself and I hold it with that hand. So blue twist away, index finger pushes up, blue towards me. Blue, orange I mean, away, and closer. So I wonder if I can get this closer. Nope, that's away. Let's have a look at that. All right, let's go again. So blue, I'm twisting away. Index finger pushes up to tighten and then blue comes towards me. Hold in place with the left hand. Twist, wrap. Twist, and before you know it, you've got this lovely rhythm happening. Do I find this relaxing? Twist away, index finger pushes to tighten and then wraps towards you. And there you go. There's a bush turkey in my garden. Every now and then just, un and I'll do this again. Simply make sure that you untangle this every now and then because if you don't do it after three or four wraps, all this is going to be all twisted up here, which you don't want. You want the twine there. Okay, I'm just going to keep bumming along. I contacted Corrine from To Be Loved Tre Treasures yesterday and we had a lovely chat because I wanted to thank her so much for what she has done. She's so good about talking about me and she even posted a comment promoting one of my classes that I'm doing recently and she was very helpful because she gave me all sorts of tips on how to prep my video and I don't know schedule when it's on and she was amazing she was so terribly helpful so once again blue is away index finger pushes up to tighten and then towards myself so she was very, very helpful. I'm just going to get to the end of this orange so I can show you how to join, which is also important. I should have brought a pair of scissors out so I can show you. But maybe I can just pause this video. I don't know. So for me, relaxation is is repeating the same kind of thing over and over. And even when I make quilts, while I really, wow, I appreciate the work and everything that goes into a, these complicated quilts with all these different sizes, pieces, and I, I'd, I'd rather poke myself in the eye with a sharp stick than do that. I find it not relaxing to do. Whereas my embroidery, I, I don't do in front of the TV. I, I either do it outside or in my sewing room. English paper piecing and this kind of thing I do when I'm watching TV at night. All that wasted time we have at night watching TV. It's just, okay, I'm coming to the end. I should really have bought a pair of little scissors here. Am I going too fast? Slow down, Jennifer. Twist away, orange twisting away, pushing up towards me. But blue away, come towards me. The ink, the dye's coming off this orange fabric. Hmm, interesting, interesting. 
it's a hand dyed fabric so thank goodness i didn't use it in a quilt orange away push up towards me blue away i haven't wet my fingers in a while because i did get this fabric quite wet so honestly use water it's it makes your life so much easier i suppose you're going to ask me now so when do you when do you dry your balls well i just sort of roll my balls up so they look like this and then i just pop them in the sun and they dry yep all right i'm coming to the end now um, don't ever join two pieces like that always make sure that your joins are quite a distance away from each other that's number one and i make sure wow look at this dye coming off here I make sure that there's a good, what is that, two inches um, of length to use as my joint. I'm going to wet my piece that I'm going to join and I'm going to wrap this. I'll get that out the way. I'm going to wrap the one that I'm joining with this new one. So you can see I've wrapped her around a few times hold her because you've got to be the boss of her otherwise she's going to go and you just carry on doing the same process and then before you know it your join is hardly noticeable now if you do what i suggested you do with that join being a, a two inches long you, you're creating strength one inch cover up of that join is not going to be strong enough to withstand pressure and if i pulled it there you go i'm coming to the end oh, morning, little rainbow lorikeets this fabric's so that is where the join is there but you can see if i pull it really firmly it's not going to pull. Look at all this dye here from that orange fabric. All right, so there you go. Fabric twine to be used in... Instead of fabric covered cord, this is going to take cost you money to buy. This you can do in front of your TV. And remember, I used one inch pieces of fabric and try and make sure that the colors that you use contrast against each other because that will give you beautifully colored oh where's my other one ball i dropped my other ball somewhere oh, here it is give you these glorious balls now you don't actually have to use your fabric twine you can just leave them and they they look very beautiful in a basket in your sewing room so there you go my morning lesson was about balls, fabric twine balls. Have a good day, everybody. Bye for now.